Hi everyone, today we're celebrating four years on YouTube, yay! So it's four years ago today since I uploaded my first ever video which was a stop motion life in Sylvania and I actually made that, I started making it when I was 12 when I got my first phone and then I made it over probably over a few months and then I just kept add, adding to it and adding to it because I wanted to make like quite a long Sylvanian movie and then that was the first video that I uploaded to my channel when I was 14 in the 19th of November 2018 so I thought to celebrate four years on YouTube I would do a Q&A so you can get to know me a bit better and my story and like my journey on YouTube as it's been four years and I've learned so much and you guys did not disappoint you've sent me loads of questions so there's a lot to get through so let's get started right so first question when did you start to collect Sylvanian families so that was in 2007 for Christmas my parents got me the Grand Hotel when I was three years old and that just started from there because they wanted me to have a doll's house and didn't really like kind of like the wooden dolls so they saw Sylvanian families with like the animal figures and thought they were really cute and that I would like them and I loved them and yeah it's just ever since then every Christmas every birthday that is all I've asked for because I just love them I just fell in love straight away with Sylvanian families next question what made you start to collect Sylvanian families well it was just kind of what I've just said really that I started collecting in 2007 and just straight away just fell in love with them and wanted to collect more and more and yeah well I suppose when I was little it was they were fun to play with but then it changed to be more like that I was more of a collector than playing with them probably when I was around probably when I started my YouTube channel I kind of started more collecting and getting things because I wanted to have like that set to collect it. Like before I remember when I was little I had the watermill bakery and then when they released brick oven bakery I thought oh that's just another bakery I do already have one bakery and same with like the um, general hospital and then when the country clinic came out I didn't get that until recently because I thought oh I've already got one hospital I don't need another because from like a playing point of view there's not much different that you could do with like a different building which has the same purpose but from now from a collecting point of view then you just want to have everything <laughs> do you have a favorite family this is probably the question that i get asked the most and i'm sure i give a different answer every single time because it's just so hard to choose because there's so many all the different types of animals they're all so cute i think if I have to choose one, I normally go for like the celebration families that are bigger because I really like that you used to be able to get a family and they'd come with mother, father, brother, sister, older brother, older sister and a baby or grandparents instead of the older siblings or things like that. I think that was really good value for money and you'd get like a family of like seven just all in one box and it was just so good. So like the Snow Warren rabbits and the Cavity Cat um there's probably more but i can't think of any off the top of my head but yeah i just think i think probably the mccavity cats are my favorite because i think the cat families are probably my favorite type of animal and they're just really cute all right next question do you collect anything besides surveying families um no not really it's just all all my money and effort is all spent on Sylvanian families yeah I don't think I don't really collect anything else so when I was little there may be other things I collected I did have some Lilith pet shops and things like that but I did collect Zuzu pets as well I did have quite a few of those but yeah at the moment it's only really Sylvanian families <laughs> what is your favorite type of video to make so I think this is quite an easy question because I know it is stop motion because that is where it all started and that was how I got into video making. It all started with 
when I got my first phone, I decided to make a stop motion and it all just started from there. So yeah, they do take a lot of patience. I've got to be motivated to make it. But once I've finished, the results are so worth it. Like it's just so magical to just see like the Sylvanian just moving along. It's like, wow, I did that, that's so cool. It's just such a cool thing to do. And I'm always really pleased with the results. All right, next. If you weren't collecting Sylvanians for a job, what would you be doing or do you have another job? Well, I wouldn't say that it's my job yet. Hopefully one day I will be a full-time YouTuber and then I would be able to say that Sylvanian Families is my job. Once I'm, well, I'm monetized. I've been monetized since um, February 2021. And I used to get about a pound a day. Recently though, since I've had my new upload schedule of um, longer videos on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays and then shorts on the days in between then that's really helped to get more views and watch time for those videos because they are longer and I think longer seems to be popular and then obviously the shorts seem to get more reach so recently it's been more like a two pounds a day almost always a kind of around that or like between 150 and two pounds which is really good that to see that it is going up after having like a year of it just being one pound a day which is good because just for a hobby just to be earning for something i would do anyway is really great but yes i do actually have a full-time job as well i'm a customer service apprentice at a garden center and i've been doing that for just over a year so i'm nearly coming to the end of my apprenticeship but i think i will stay on there all right, next question. Do you face any difficulties collecting Sylvanian family sets? Um, I think the biggest difficulty or problem is that once I've got them, where to put them? Because the Sylvanian room is getting quite full. But having my IKEA Kallax unit that I've got as a table in the middle, three of them pushed together, that's good for like the smaller buildings like shops and smaller houses they fit really well in there so we're not at full capacity yet luckily but it is getting quite full but yeah I'd say that's probably the only difficulty that I face with that I suppose sometimes finding sets that might be older because I only collect them new I don't have anything that's second hand because I've always looked after them so well since I was little, then it would make sense to me to only get new that I can look after and not get things that haven't been looked after so well. So yeah, I suppose that's another thing that trying to find older sets is quite harder, is a bit harder to do. But yeah, mainly it's just where to put them, where to store them. <laughs> right. Who or what inspired you to make videos? Well, I never really watched YouTube much as a child, so there weren't any like YouTubers that I watched. I didn't really start watching YouTube until I had a YouTube channel. So, I don't really know. I don't think there was really much that kind of inspired me. I suppose I got the idea for of stop motion. That kind of came from watching things like Wallace and Gromit or Shaun the Sheep. I knew that was stop motion and that was obviously like taking moving them taking photos and I thought I could do that with my Sylvanians and that once I got my first phone then I had like a camera that I could use which I could have the app on there as well that would make it quite easy just to try it and see if I could do it and if it was fun and it was so I suppose probably just watching films that were stop motion kind of inspired me do your friends or family support you in collecting and making videos? Definitely. So my family have always, like every Christmas, every birthday, like when I've asked for Sylvanians, then they've given me Sylvanians for Christmas and for birthdays. And yeah, so they've always supported me in my collecting. And then with videos, I think I always talk to my friends from work about my channel and they quite often ask me 
like how many subscribers have I got and things like that. So yeah, they definitely all support me, which is really nice. And it's quite funny when sometimes people do tell me that they do watch my channel and I'm like, really, you watch me? It's quite funny to think that. Like it's kind of, I don't know, I think sometimes when I'm just behind the camera, talking to the camera, and I don't fully realise that I'm making a video that the world can now see. It's kind of crazy to think that there's people that watch me and enjoy watching. It's quite a cool thought. But yeah, it's just crazy. <laughs> right, next question. And this one is a really good one. Of your videos, which one is your least favourite? That is a really hard question because I've made a lot of videos, like I think over a thousand videos, I think it was at a thousand two hundred. So there must have been quite a few bad ones, but it's hard to kind of think. I'm going to have to look through my videos and find a really, really interesting one that's kind of probably from a while ago when I wasn't that good at knowing what it's all to say or do or lighting and things like that. <laughs> so I've definitely come a long way. Right, so I'm now just scrolling through my videos. So these are they're in order of most recent, so these all should be fairly good, I hope. To have uploaded it, it must have been good enough. Maybe I'll order them by um popularity and then see which ones are the least popular because I imagine oh I clicked on something. The ones that are least popular should be the worst you think let's have a look this is such a good question something i've never really thought about before because i think i just make a video watch it through when i'm editing and think yeah it's all right and i just put it out to the world so yeah let's try and find one that's not so good scroll all the way to the bottom which might take a while because I have done like, over a thousand videos so let's keep scrolling I think when I did slideshows they weren't very good that was a really lazy video to make all right we're at the bottom now so find Freya that's the bottom videos those two which I think with those I think they're only really would appeal to people that did watch my channel already and knew that I did fine for a video it's quite a few people that would comment would say oh it's my favorite type of video because it's fun and things like that but then in the end I did stop doing those because I kind of ran out of places to hide them and yeah they didn't get as many views as the other videos so I thought maybe that's to show that other people don't really like them so much. Now well, it is a bit of a lazy video because I was just going around the room taking, what, 10 photos and then circling where she was. Quite a quick and easy one that wasn't so popular in the end. So I did stop doing those. Um, what else have we got? Oh, when I did videos like that, when I was saying oh thank you for 250 subscribers here's my new goal i think i would literally just say that and that'd be it, like 41 seconds let's watch it there's no other anyway let's watch this oh i look young 2019 <laughs> still do the yay <laughs> Yeah, that was literally just me saying how many subscribers and then how many I wanted to get, so kind of boring, kind of a pointless video. And then another 100 subscribers. So my bottom videos are kind of the videos I just did, just for the sake of making a video. And another thing when I did like, um, like my Amiibo collection and also my Animal Crossing cards and Amiibo collection, they weren't as popular, but I think whenever I make a video that isn't Sylvanian related, it flops for whatever reason. I guess it's because I'm already, YouTube knows me as a Sylvanian family's 
creator, not a Animal Crossing or anything like that. So when I do something like that, it's probably like confused, like why didn't you make something about Sylvanians? Let's try and find a video. Oh, keep clicking on things to watch that. It's like one of the worst. Oh, that's a shame, but that one's quite like, oh, it is a slideshow, because I remember doing that and I was really pleased with my Olympic Games series. And again, My Little Pony, whenever I do anything not Sylvanian, it doesn't get so many views. Yeah. Oh, let's look at this one. The thumbnail looks bad, so the video is probably not great. I remember um, I used to do my videos after school, so this was... September 2019, so I would have been in year, um, what year would I have been in? Year 11? It would have been the start of year 11, yeah. This was the start of year 11. So I was doing this after school, and I clearly had no lighting. So it was the evening, it was dark, I had some kind of yellow light, probably just the light that is in this room which makes the colours look really weird in all the photos. I'm going to say this might be one of the worst, my, my least favourite, because it's clearly just a lazy, take a couple of photos, put them in a slideshow and stick it on YouTube. Oh, that one, that photo's better. I must have done that with some a good light there. But apart from that, the rest of them are very kind of yellow. But yeah, that was a good question, so thank you for that, it was very interesting. Right, so, what animals do you wish Trevanian families would make? I think the number one top family that I would really want for them to make would be Cocker Spaniel dogs, or any sort of Spaniel, as I do have a Cocker Spaniel. So it'd be really nice to have a family of those but yeah I think other dog breeds as well I think German Shepherds they would be really cute um I mean, it's hard to think of other animals because they've really covered a lot like farm animals wild animals like lions and things they've covered loads of different types of animals already so it's kind of hard to think oh I've just had a thought that I've never thought of before but just suddenly just came to me tapirs that would be interesting because they've got like the weird kind of nose thing going on haven't they they would be cool that would be really interesting i just suppose the kind of more oh and the babies would be aren't baby tapirs kind of brown with like the white spots and then when they're adults they're like just black and white that would be really cute for the babies and they've got the kind of weird kind of long face that would be really interesting um but yeah they've got like red pandas pandas they covered loads of different kind of wild animals. It's hard to actually think of something they haven't done. I suppose maybe with foxes, they've got the like the honey foxes. They're kind of more of a yellowy kind of colour, but maybe a more orangey kind of coloured fox, like they do. They look more orange. It's actually really hard to think of things because they have done loads, but. Yeah, just maybe some more exotic kind of animals, I suppose. And definitely more different dog breeds. I suppose you could even have different kind of sorts of cats. Like kind of, I would say fluffier ones, but then we've got the Persian cats that are fluffy. So it's hard to kind of think. Hmm. Just more exotic things, I suppose. But yeah, whatever they make, I'd be happy. <laughs> maybe if they did owls again. That'd be really good. But yeah, they obviously have already done that. But if they would re-release the owls like they did with the ducks, I think that would be cool. And yeah. Is there a set that was released in the UK during your time collecting? So probably distributed by Fleur that you didn't get but wished you had. Yes, there's probably loads. I think probably the top ones that I really wished that I'd got. Well, definitely Highfields Farm, because that was something I'd asked for. And then it was discontinued just before my birthday. So that was a shame. Like, that, that's so close to getting it. But then they stopped making it, which was really sad. 
because I remember they had it on the front of their catalogue and everything but then they just stopped making it so that was mine that was like the one that got away do you have any tips for storing houses so I'd say for the smaller houses then I have them in my IKEA Kallax unit or any shelving unit would work well maybe bookshelves I think I've seen people use but any kind of shelving works well for the smaller houses and then for the big houses I don't know if you can see just behind me here I've got the big ones just underneath the table well actually my Kallax unit is underneath the middle table where it actually is the middle table anyway so I think just making use of all the space that's like might otherwise not be used like under a table you can have storage under and then have setups that you can change on the top I'll just show you those now What are your dream Slovenian families you would love to own? So I think of the families I'd say the owls because I'd like them to be, I think they're the head teacher of the school, so I think they'd be good to have to run the school. Um, I'm sure there's another family I thought of that I've just forgotten. Um, oh, I've remembered the hound dog family. I have the baby. He came, I think his name's Jeffro Huckleberry. He came with the student, um, like nursery student set or four babies or three babies can't remember which with like school bags and things like that but he obviously doesn't have any family as I don't have them so it'd be good to have the hound dog family right next how did you find out about these cute animal collectibles so again I've already touched on this so this was when I started collecting in 2007 I don't think I'd seen them before then it was just that my parents got them for me for Christmas, the Grand Hotel, along with some furniture sets and families. And that was all where it started and that was how I discovered Sylvanian families. What would be the best family or set you've purchased and why? Oh, this is a good question as well. One I have to think about. Um, I'll answer for both family and sets. So I think for the best family I've purchased... I'll go with anything that I have rather than ones I've necessarily purchased, just ones that have been given to me as well so I can cover the whole collection. So if family's the best and why? Hmm. That is a really good question. I'd say, again, I'm probably going to go with like a celebration family or like the larger families. Uh... I'm gonna have to have a look at them because I can't think off the top of my head. <laughs> right, I thought of which family is probably the best, best value for money and just one of my favourites. I'd say the Celebration Snow Rabbit, Snow Warren Rabbit family because I remember I got them when we were on holiday in our caravan and we went to a John Lewis and they had them in there and I remember that was when that was where we got them from. I remember that just so vividly, which is strange and really random, but I just remember we had them, we had them in the caravan and then obviously came home from the holiday. And yeah, I mean, it was always exciting to buy Sylvanians on holiday because I don't take the Sylvanians out of the house, but then obviously then I have them not at home and then they come home and then they're not allowed out again because to keep them safe. I like them to stay in the Sylvanian room. But yeah, I feel like that was always cool to have Sylvanians like in the caravan when we had it when I was younger because it was something that I wouldn't usually have because I didn't like to bring them with me because I would be worried about losing the pieces. But yeah, the Snow Warren Rabbit family was really good value because it came with mother, father, brother, sister, grandparents and the baby. So that was really good. So yeah, it's just one of my favourite families, so I do like the larger families and their good value for money. And then for sets, 
I think for this I'll say a set or a building. I'm thinking, I think the first one that came to mind when I read this question was the baby fairground house. So this was one that I did get when I was very little, one of the first things that I got and I just love to play with it and it's probably one of my favourite buildings as it just looks so iconic and my favourite bit was this secret door at the back which you can hide a baby in had hours of fun with that when I was little I think this is going to be one of my longest videos but I think we are getting there, we're nearly done um, how did you learn your great video making skill? Well, thank you. Um, well, really, it was just practice. Lots of it. So I started my channel four years ago and I just didn't know anything about social media, about video making. Didn't know anything. So really, I just started from no skills to starting to learn some skills and then just to keep developing them since then and always keep improving. I think the two YouTube channels I watched when I first started just to learn kind of the YouTube side of things of uploading and tags and keywords and all that. I watched two channels and one was Brian G. Johnson and the other one was Nick Nimmin. And now I do sometimes still watch them but now I usually watch them um, Vanessa Lau, she's got some really good tips for Instagram as well as YouTube. So her videos are always full of great value and always really helpful. So really I've just kind of learned the skills myself and then also watched um, YouTubers that teach people how to do YouTube as well. What types of Slovenian families do you like the best? This is a nice, quick and easy question. So I think for me it has to be the cats. Growing up I was always a cat person but now I am a dog person as well and I just think there's a lot of variety with the cats with like some of them are stripy, different colours like tuxedo cats, they're different colours, Persian cats, they're fluffy. There's a lot of variety with all the different cats and I think when I made the video of tidying the cat families, I realise a lot of them are saying, this is one of my favourite families, this is one of my favourite families. I have got so many favourite families that I don't even know what my favourite is. So I think they're definitely the best type. I think maybe if there are more options for dogs, then dogs would also be up there as well. But then you've got to think there's also rabbits, there's loads of different rabbits. So you've got the chocolate rabbits, milk rabbits, they're the only two I can think of, but I know there's loads, cottontail rabbits, um, there's loads, there's loads. I think, yeah, probably cat, dog, rabbits, mice, there's loads of mice as well. All the top ones where there's loads, and bears. I'm just covering them all now, they're all my favourite. See, I always say this, I think of, oh yeah, I like this one, and then I think, oh yeah, and that one, and that one, and that one. But yeah, if I had to choose, I'd go with cats. Right, so what is your favourite set or family? So I've already said my favourite family, or favourite families, as it may be. And favourite set? I'd say... Hmm... Ooh... I've just thought of one. But the thing is, I think of one, then I think of like ten others. But my first kind of instinct for what my favourite is, is um, Ingrid's camping set. So I just think that's a really cute set that has everything you need to go camping. I just love her outfit and the tent is really cute. But I have thought of something else as well. The pony and trap because I think it's good value because it comes with obviously the pony that's pulling the cart. And it has the marquee over the top which you can then take off and then use to have like a picnic under. It's got picnic blankets and plates and food and cups and a drink so it's got everything you need for a picnic so that's a really good set i would say that's probably one that would be good to start off with i think it was one of the first ones i got as well in early on in my collection i think it's probably one that was good to begin your collection with like if you only had that to play with 
because you got the pony and the to pull it and the marquee and everything for a picnic so you can have a little trip out in the cart to go and have a picnic so obviously all you'd need would be some figures so you'd get a family as well and that could be like all you'd need to start off your collection and start playing so I think that was a really good set good value for money lots of different things you could like ways you could play with it like you have them sitting in it and put it along and then you could take that bit off and have them having a picnic as well so it's just a really nice set and made by flair of course all the best were made by flair because they were just so just so natural and nostalgic now <laughs> what's the most you've spent on a set so the most i've spent on one set was actually two things that were both the same price and that was 150 quid and that was the milkman that was because they had him at the Sylvanian family shop and um, he was made by Tommy. I think it was from 92. So like an old, rare, discontinued set. So you would expect it to be that much. But I luckily managed to find that brand new as that was something that I did really want. And then the other thing was the classic colour red roof country home gift set so that was exclusive on the Sylvanian family's official online uk store and that came with the house i think seven furniture sets as well as chocolate rabbit family and wearing like special limited edition clothing and so they came in their own separate nice box to keep them in as well and then it was the nice classic color Red Roof Country Home, so it was like more. Put it down here actually somewhere. So instead of being like red with kind of a yellow, kind of creamy colour walls, it's more kind of white with like brown wood and things like that. It looks a bit more classic, I suppose. But yeah, that was. They were both 150 quid each. So you get a lot more for one than the other. But the Milkman set was really rare, so. It was really lucky to be able to get that. Next question is how many Freyas do you have? So for this I'm gonna have to show you. That was like the ultimate game of find Freya. That took me 20 minutes to find all of them. So I have 18 Freyas. And also, I've seen some people include these when they show all of their Freyas, so I thought I'd just add them to show that I do also have them. Claire on the left, she is the sister of Freya, and she came with Cozy Cottage Starter Home. I think it was exclusive from The Entertainer. And then we've got the cousin, Cherry, who came with Cherry's Day at the Seaside. I'll tell you which Freyers came from which sets. So I've put them roughly in order that I got them in. They aren't definitely in the order, but most of them are somewhere in correctly in the Freya timeline. So to start off with, we have the original Freya who came with the family. This was the first Freya I got, and the Chocolate Rabbits were one of my first families. And then from a Halloween set, a membership renewal gift for 2015, Seaside Cruiser Houseboat, school music set, um, Seaside Birthday Party set, 2016 membership renewal, the Ice Skating Friends, um, the Ballet Theatre, um, the these two they both came with a uh what's the word boutique the boutique gift set one of them came with the boutique gift set and the other came with the dressing area set a kimono set the violin concert set the luxurious dress girl the seaside um 
set with them in their costumes. Also comes with creme. And then Cozy Cottage, Red Roof Cozy Cottage Start at Home. And then the last two were with like the limited edition versions of the family. One of them, the first one came with the one in the blue packaging, which was just the family. And the one on the right came with the classic colour Red Roof Country Home gift set, which also came with the whole family in limited edition clothing. Right, we're almost at the end. Not many questions left now. What house would you like to live in if you were a Sylvanian character? Oh, I think... Hmm... I think maybe Fieldview Mill, because I think that would be quite interesting to live in. With, like the round rooms. It's quite, quite a nice place to live. And also the views from there as well would be amazing. What inspired you to make your channel and even your first stop motion? So I've already kind of covered this, that I started my channel because I started making stop motions. And then once I did stop motions, I thought, why not do unboxings as well? Because obviously I was going to get new Sylvanians anyway and open them up. So I might as well show you guys as well at the same time. So yeah, it was just really from watching stop motion films that inspired me to do stop motion, give it a try. And then from there, kind of my love of video making just kind of happened. <laughs> Where do you buy your Sylvanians? Mainly from the Sylvanian family shop in London, because I think it seems to be the cheapest place and the best place. I have the best um, range of them as well where they have some of the flare stuff still sometimes they might get things that were um, older or like collector's items so I always have my eye on their website to see if anything exciting pops up uh, also get things from Smith's toy store sometimes things suddenly pop up on there a bit earlier than everywhere else like a while ago when like the comfy living room set and things like that, those furniture sets came out. I'd gone in Smith's thinking, oh, they won't have anything new. And then they did have that, which was surprising. So I think sometimes they do randomly get things a bit earlier. Sometimes I looked on the website and they've had things that are earlier as well, which is good. And then Amazon, not as often, but sometimes they might get things a bit earlier or it might be cheaper. But usually, like 90% of the time, Sylvanian Family Shop in London. And last question, what's your favourite social media platform to promote your content? So, at the moment, I mainly use Instagram. And I do sometimes use TikTok. But not often. If I remember to post, I normally post my Instagram reels and then post them to TikTok if I remember. I don't normally make content specifically for TikTok because when you have a full-time job, a YouTube channel with three full-length videos a week, plus shorts, and then plus Instagram, it's a lot to do. So TikTok is just if I have an idea, if I have time, and if I can share it on Instagram as well and YouTube shorts, trying to make it a bit easier by sharing it all everywhere. But I'd say Instagram is my favourite, so I'll share my links and my videos on there, on my like, on my story. And yeah, that's probably the only one that I have. Well, I've just got a thousand followers on TikTok the other day, so that was good. But that's probably the one with my biggest following. I've got like 3,100, I think, followers on Instagram, which is funny because that used to be more than the amount I had on YouTube for ages. When I first got Instagram, it was so easy to grow because you could just follow people that did Sylvanian families and then they'd follow you back. And when you're just finding loads of other collectors to follow, you can soon get more people to follow you rather than on YouTube, you're making a video and hoping it reaches the right audience. It's easier to find other people who make who take photos of Sylvanians and make videos and things like that. I think Instagram probably was the best. But nowadays, Instagram's all about reels because, you know, TikTok's become popular and that's all the short form videos that has kind of made Instagram a bit harder to grow. 
So I've actually, my YouTube channel has overtaken my Instagram, but Instagram is still the best place to try and promote my videos as I think. I tried Facebook, I've tried having a Facebook group and then putting my links on there. I think there's like nine people in my Facebook group, one of which is me and my mum and yeah, <laughs> so it's not really something that you can grow very easily. On my Facebook page has, I don't know, I think it's got about 40 likes or follows or whatever you call it on Facebook. I don't really get Facebook to be honest, but yeah, that doesn't really grow. So I don't, I think my Instagram posts do normally go on there, but I don't actually post on it. It just does it automatically from Instagram post it to Facebook so Instagram is the best one and Twitter again like Facebook didn't seem to grow at all on it but yeah Instagram is the best for promoting my content and then TikTok would be second best and that is all thank you all for all the questions and I hope that I've covered them all and haven't missed any and I'll see you in the next video bye